like most channels, on the Cardboard Herald, we tend to cover the games that are the latest and greatest, the hotness, the games that have just come out or are on the precipice of coming out. And that's kind of a disservice because there are so many games that have come out over the years that might as well be treated like artifacts of antiquity by modern board game standards, but are excellent and can still surprise you. And one such game is what we are reviewing today, War Chest, designed by Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson, who you might know from the Undaunted series, which started in 2019 with the release of Undaunted Normandy and just had this enormous release with Undaunted Stalingrad. But what you might not know is that even though this game came out first, this is a distillation of the Undaunted system into its barest parts. And once you realize that, it's impossible to separate the two in spite of them coming from different publishers and having very different thematic presentations. And I'm going to be honest, I really love both. But this isn't a comparison review between Undaunted and War Chess, though I think the lineage is interesting to note and will give some people some bearings and maybe bring some more people to the table that wouldn't otherwise try out this game. So let's actually take a look at what is War Chess, and then we'll talk about some of why I think it's so great and maybe some of the drawbacks of this game. War Chest is a head-to-head -head game, typically played between two players, but supports up to four players with an expanded play space if playing on teams. Each side's objectives are to claim a number of control points, either neutral control points or those belonging to the other side, to immediately win the game. The magic of it and what makes the game absolutely rip is your unique assortment of units and how those units are activated. During setup, each player is dealt 4 out of 16 cards, which correspond to the 16 unit types in the box. Basic setup has you stop there, though I'm a big advocate for drafting once both players have some experience with the game. While all units have the same basic functions unless otherwise noted, these cards are references that tell you the unique bits of asymmetry for the 4 and only 4 types of units you'll have access to during this session. Total number of tokens, passive effects, or unique abilities are inseparable from how you decide to approach what is otherwise a fairly rudimentary game. From there, two of the wonderfully clinky tokens of each of your unit types go into your bag, along with one of your team's royal coins, which can be used for face-down actions. More on that in a bit. At the start of the round, players each draw three of these tokens, then take turns playing a token as an action one at a time until they run out. If you play a unit and it's not already on the board, it can be deployed at one of your empty control points. If you play a token and its corresponding unit type is already on the board, you instead activate it, which can be any unique tactics that are listed on its unit card, or for taking a basic action, moving a space, attacking a neighboring unit, or taking ownership of a control point that it's currently on. Combat is swift and brutal, unless otherwise specified by the card, such as the Lancer or the Archer, any unit can be activated to attack a neighboring unit, which just involves activating them and then killing the other unit, removing that token from the board. Some units then get to move after attacking, or units like the Archer can attack up to two spaces away, or the Lancer can move then attack up to two or even three spaces away so long as they do it all within a straight line. So you start looking at all the different abilities of your units and you're like, tricky pickles. Also, tokens, including your royal coin, can be discarded face down from hand to add any unit from your supply to your discard pile, which, like any good deck and or bag building game, when you run out of things to draw, your discard pile gets recycled. And that face down discard is crucial because it obfuscates which unit you used. And in a game this tight, any information you can glean is imperative, almost as imperative as having the initiative, which alternatively, any token can be discarded face down. So you claim the initiative. So you go first next round. And that's pretty much the game. You're just taking turns with your opponent throughout rounds, trying to take control points. You're always posturing and beckoning and sussing out what your opponents can do based off of what face-up actions they've taken and what you can see in their supply. There's the ability to bolster units where you put a second token on top of an existing one in play so that way it has like an extra hit point. It can survive an additional attack. And that plays into some of the abilities that these units have. And 
everything feels like a monumental decision if you recruit, you're sacrificing potential activations this round. If you take actions, then you're sacrificing the ability to recruit. If you lose one of your units, it feels really important because that unit does not go back to the supply. They get removed from the game. So if you lose all your pikemen, then that's it. Your pikemen capabilities are toast. But that gives the game momentum and pressure and risk and makes every action feel really severe and weighty just like the tokens that you're actually manipulating, which feel so good in your hand. So clearly, I really like this game. I love playing it with my kid, with my wife, with my friends. There are players that are in my group who typically don't like confrontational games, but there's something about the elegance and grace of this game and the immediacy of everything that makes it more appealing to them. And unlike a lot of abstract strategy games, this has that modern, juicy asymmetry that you can really latch onto. It feels awesome to look at any assortment of different units that you have at your disposal and go, how do I wring the most out of this? And yes, some pairings of units are going to be a lot more synergistic than others. And that may be a turnoff for people who are abstract strategy purists, but I do find that most of it is more or less balanced. And there are interesting tactical compositions that you can make just out of about any array. And if you feel too bad about it, that's where the drafting becomes more potent. So that way you have a hand in who you assemble together out of the potential eight cards that are going to be between two players. If there's any other criticisms that I can weigh on this, one, I think the board isn't as elegant as it should be, which clearly you can see from this video that I've been prototyping throughout this, making a cloth board, which I think came out pretty well and gives it a, a sense of elegance and antiquity that I felt the rest of the game deserved. I want a board, especially with moving around these pieces that isn't propping up all the time. But if you really wanted to, you know, you could bend it back into shape. That's something tons of board games have to deal with. As a more legitimate criticism, this is a game where a bad draw at the beginning of a round can really kill your momentum. I mean, usually that's based off of the preceding actions and you put yourself into a position where you were going to be vulnerable if you didn't get the right tokens to come up. But nonetheless, there can be situations where you thought you were in a great position and just you draw those tokens and you're like, oh, there's nothing I can do with this because all of my units in play are sitting on control points and I don't have units that can move them so I can do nothing but take initiative and buy some units this round while I wait for my opponent to come at me. But nonetheless, this game feels deliberate, smart, elegant and refined. It's incredibly accessible, is very easy to learn, and it's very good to start understanding strategic implications of how you build your bag, of how you posture your units, how to wring the most out of the units that you do have at your disposal. And it feels like there's a weighty depth to it, but it doesn't have that kind of heady opacity that a lot of abstract strategy games carry with them. So if you're looking for an approachable abstract war game, or you're looking for something that tickles the, a, a more refined, almost chessy and itch, or you're just looking for a great game with fantastic components, then I highly, highly recommend that you check out War Chest. And that's our review, but let us know in the comments below, what's your favorite abstract strategy game? Have you tried War Chest? Have you tried Undaunted? And what's your preference between the two? And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being an awesome community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.